It's time for Spotlight on Business on the NCW Life Channel, where we look inside the stories of the businesses that make up North Central Washington. On today's program, Doghouse Motorsports, Charter College, and Wenatchee Valley Brewing. It's all right now on Spotlight on Business on the NCW Life Channel. For over 60 years in the Wenatchee Valley, if you wanted to go out and play in the mountains or on the water, you had to stop by Wenatchee Honda in downtown Wenatchee. Well, several years ago, Dwayne and Kathy Marker bought Wenatchee Honda and they moved it out here on the north end of town. It's Doghouse Motorsports, and we're going to find out how the Markers are able to make it as a business couple as well as a married couple here on our Spotlight on Business. I was born and raised in Wenatchee, and uh, uh, from about nine years old on, racing motorcycles and jet skis and snowmobiles, and, and then uh, we got married, went to school, got married, and moved to California for about eight years, and then back to Seattle area, and then back to Wenatchee. So I was an enthusiast way before we, way before we owned the business. Yeah, I started recreating with all these toys when I was about five years old lived in Montana and my dad was a big advocate and uh, so got started really early. Yeah, I was lucky enough to get to travel around the United States and mini bikes uh, doing the mini nationals and um, that was back in the 70s and then uh, early 70s and then in the late 70s I got to do the same thing on big bikes and do ride the 125 nationals for a couple of years and got to do three supercrosses in Seattle and, and then um, it's just it's just one of those things that gets in your blood. It's a hard thing to shake. So I've raced jet skis and I've raced snowmobiles and uh, it's just, it's a sickness almost. <laughs> <laughs> Transitioning from a career in software development, Dwayne says his passion and hobby grew and inspired the new business venture. I was looking to do something different and I always wanted to do something in, in this industry and uh, just mentioned something to Gary one day, previous owner, and uh, 13 years later it happened. It was um, scary, but it was also very exciting. Um, as Dwayne mentioned, you know, our family has been in it forever, so it seemed like a natural transition on the things we like to do and a lot of passion around it. We started out calling ourselves Wenatchee Honda BRP because it had been Wenatchee Honda for almost 50 years. And then we slowly progressed into to Doghouse Motorsports, which is our, our, our DPA. So why Doghouse Motorsports? Well, a friend of mine and myself years ago, probably about 12 years before we ever bought the shop, uh, been both been married a long time, a lot of years, and we were enthusiast racers, riders, and uh, we would go riding and occasionally maybe not get the lawn mowed or do a few things we were supposed to do and, and be gone too long. So it just kind of progressed from that. Our wives, fortunately, both of our wives were... Uh, we were lucky enough for them to let us go do this stuff and not not uh, get too irritated with all of it, but occasionally we would cross the line and, and be in the doghouse. So that's how the name came about. Is he out of the doghouse yet? Or? Oh, no, uh, never, <laughs> never. I don't see that happening in the near future. No, and now I literally come to it every day. So <laughs> <laughs> We had uh, bear signs. Dennis worked with us and helped us design that sign. And um, it, it just kind of branded us and and it's terrific visibility at night when it's lit up it's just it's great visibility the markers offer a variety of stock at the shop including honda brp honda power equipment ski do and sea do and can am Dwayne says the industry has evolved since the start of doghouse i mean the guys tease me uh you Dwayne, you thought you bought a motorcycle shop because mm -hmm. uh, if you look um you see a lot of four-wheelers and side-by-sides and that's been the biggest change side-by-sides have just really taken off the last three years probably i think when you get uh you get into motocross it's predominantly guys a, a few women um you get into snowmobiles it's still predominantly guys but there's more um, wives and girlfriends that are also riding um, and then when you get the street bikes, kind of the same, um, but side by sides is definitely geared more towards family stuff. Not entirely. It's still couples, um, and some of them are uh, older, maybe retired, and, and, and they want it for a variety of reasons. Uh, but a lot of them, um, the side by sides getting used for just family stuff and hunting and, and working on the farms and ranches and, and stuff. What we try to do when somebody comes in is we find out 
what what they want and then how they want to use it because then it might they might be thinking they want this model here but then when we talk to them a little bit and find out how they're going to use it then maybe this model is a little bit better whether it's more or whether it's less it's kind of not the point it's it's the right unit for that person motorsports enthusiasts should expect an exciting addition to the doghouse showroom we have our eye on a, another manufacturer that we'd like to bring in that I think would augment the products we have really, really well. And uh, we know we have some customers waiting for that deal to happen. As they grow their business, the markers say a challenge they'll continue to face is the age of online shopping. It's going to be a challenge with uh, the way things are going internet-wise with sales and stuff. It already is a little bit, um, but I think the, I think we're I think we're heading to some area, we're heading to down the path where it's going to make it harder and harder for brick and mortar. Um, the, the advantage that the online guys have is that they've got volume behind them and way more volume than we could ever hope to do here. Um, so we probably need to branch into online a little bit more. We're just dabbling right now. Uh, we probably need to do more to help that scenario, but, but that, that to be honest, that's going to be a challenge. Kathy says the advantages of buying from a brick and mortar business outweigh the convenience of online shopping. A lot of it is even, are they buying the right product? You know, so there is an education process to make sure the consumers match with what they're really looking for, or what they need. And then, you know, here you can have it right away. So I don't know if you want to wait two days, three days, whatever. And then there's also the who's backing it. You know, if there's a problem with that part or whatever you have purchased, do you have somebody to go back to, um, to return it, exchange it, whatever, where we're here five days a week uh, to help the customers. At the end of the day, the markers say they value trust and experience in order to best serve their customers. And the fact that we do what we sell is huge. So customers get real life experiences, real life advice based on situations and the sales staff is uh, definitely very tenured. We just, I think we have, uh, we've got a lot of knowledge here and we've got some pretty straight up honest people and, and, and we try to make sure we mm -hmm. get the, sometimes the customer comes in and they want X and there's no talking, no changing, fine, we'll get you X. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of times, uh, we can say, well, this might be a little bit, you know, a little bit cheaper, but this, or this is a little bit better, or both. And uh, so I, I think that uh, trust, uh, we try to get to a point where people come in and they trust what we have to say. Up next, we'll find out more about a small college in East Wenatchee. It's right here on Spotlight on Business. Welcome back to the NCW Life Channel's Spotlight on Business. It started over 20 years ago in Alaska and has grown throughout the western states. It's Charter College and it's right here in East Wenatchee. We're going to spend some time today talking and learning more about Charter College with the president of the East Wenatchee campus, David Barshas. It's right here on the NCW Life Channel. Charter College is a technical college, so people come to us to learn um, business skills, IT skills, but our main specialty at this location is medical assisting. Charter College has been around uh, since the mid-80s. Our, our first uh, campus is based in uh, Anchorage, Alaska, actually. And then uh, there was a merger, and now we have, cam we have 14 campuses. Um, in Washington, Montana, New Mexico, California, and Alaska. People sometimes ask if we're a charter school, which we're not. Um, I think charter just came from the idea of, you know, a voyage or a, or a journey. These students are on an academic and, and career journey. What kind of students are coming through the doors of Charter College? And what opportunities are available? I can say that uh, the young people that come through our doors, you know, they're looking for uh, uh, an opportunity that will pay dividends, uh, literally, I guess, in, in terms of uh, a job with uh, career advancement opportunities and, and something that uh, can be accomplished within a year, 
time frame. And the medical assisting program is a 10-month program. Um, they're, they're here taking classes uh, three days of the week at most um, for a couple hours uh, at a time. And for you know, um, young parents, um, working parents, uh, this works for their schedule. Uh, and and they, they can see the light at the end of the tunnel where they're working for a provider like Confluence Health. Uh, we, we prefer to send them to Confluence because that's where the job opportunities are. Uh, if, if there's a relationship that a student might have with a more local or, or private provider, we can certainly um, help make that match happen. We are looking for uh, prospective students who are serious, who will commit to investing in their future. Uh, we, we're happy to talk with anyone, but uh, if, if someone does not imagine themselves you know, wearing the cap and gown and putting on the scrubs and actually working in the field, then maybe we're not the best fit for them. We, we pride ourselves on really knowing our students, all of them on a first name basis. We have about 50 students right now in, in the medical assisting program. The diversity of backgrounds, um, students bring their own life experiences to the classroom and, and that mixing is, is definitely, uh, it makes the educational process uh, fun and, and you know, teachers learn too. So uh, it, it, it goes both ways. Charter has several locations around the West and offers a unique way of interviewing for a spot in a program. When they walk in, they'll interview uh, with our staff in the admissions department at uh, other locations. But they'll, they'll interview by video. And then uh, they'll also do the same process for our uh, financial aid applications. Uh, but all our teaching uh, is here on ground uh, locally. Um, and we have a, a lab, a fully stocked uh, medical lab, and also a classroom. Yeah, it can take a couple visits, maybe an hour or two at a time. We really dig into potential uh, challenges that a student might have on the personal side of things, uh, whether it's transportation, uh, work schedules, childcare, what have you. Uh, and we try to address those up front. Um, before they even begin classes. As an um, accredited school, we, we are able to provide federal financial aid. Uh, we can assist students in researching scholarships to individuals, and there's literally thousands of opportunities for that. And we also offer uh, what's called federal work study, where a student, an, a currently enrolled student, can apply to the program and either that uh, student would work here uh, on campus part-time, uh, assisting uh, our instructors in the lab, or uh, we can pair that student with a nonprofit community organization, and they are essentially being uh, paid to work as a volunteer. Uh, we have partnerships with the public library system, uh, the school districts, uh, Habitat for Humanity, uh, Humane Society, things like that. Charter College offers an educational experience with real professionals from throughout the field. All our instructors uh, are practitioners, so they come with that multiple years of experience working in the healthcare field. Uh, and that's, that's the only way uh, we're able to impart those skills onto our students. <laughs> there are soft skills that we really try to drive home, you know, uh, dress for success is a, is a big theme here that we uh, are pretty strict with. And, you know, professionalism is not just appearance, it's attitude, language, mindset, and, and that will put our students um, at a competitive advantage versus uh, maybe students from other programs. At the end of the day, Barshas says he finds the job inspiring as students continue to overcome challenges in their lives. Some of our students come with uh, very big personal challenges, either happening right now or, or in their past. And, and we have quite a few success stories where, you know, maybe a student had to drop out due to a family emergency, and then they re-enroll, and they make good on their commitment to themselves. 
and and those are I think um, the the best days when 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 those students you know they struggle and we see them struggle and we help them as much as we can but at the end of the day it's really up to that person to take the steps and finish and and not everyone makes it um, and some struggle more than others and and the days where the, the students who struggle the most when they can say I did it those are the best days coming up next we'll brew some beer with Wenatchee Valley Brewing on the NCW Life Channel's Spotlight on Business We're here at the Pibus Public Market right on the waterfront in downtown Wenatchee. This has become the go-to place for not only visitors to North Central Washington, but locals as well. If you want to get a night out on the town to taste, to smell, and to experience what's available here in North Central Washington. Now, one place to stop when you're here at Pibus is the Wenatchee Valley Brew Pub. We're going to talk to Dan Bass, the owner, about going from a private brewer at home to going public. That's right here on the NCW Life Channel. Uh, my name is Dan Bass, and I'm the owner of uh, Wenatchee Valley Brew Pub, which is uh, under the umbrella of Wenatchee Valley Brewing Company. We uh, started home brewing um, about eight, ten years ago with my son and uh, our nephew Jesse. That's how I got started home brewing. Uh, our brewery is just uh, up on the roundabout, a half mile here from Pibus Market, which is where we're at now. And we started our business here in Pibus first. We put the brewery on hold. The space came open in Pibus. Uh, so we put our efforts into getting this little space open. And uh, once we got this up and running, then we engaged and got the brewery going. That uh, garage that we're in now um, was the original garage for the house that was on the property that they had taken out for Riverside Drive to go through. And so I was able to uh, sign a lease and get that up and running. It's very, very small, um, but it's very fun down there. It's a unique atmosphere, which is much different than here in Pibus. We also do functions uh, at both places. Uh, some people want to be outside, so the brewery um, takes care of that, and other people want to be inside. And so here at the pub in Pibus, they're able to do that as well. So we coexist that way. It's a nice, nice little setup. Dan says he transitioned from a career as a local firefighter to brewing after his retirement. You know, I'm blessed to have uh, had the best job in the world uh, as a firefighter. There was many, many things that were uh, rewarding with that job. And one of the great things uh, with that job was I had quality time off and that we spent a lot of time with the family and, and then able to do other uh, work. When I, before brewing, I was in construction. That's how I help put four kids through college and so I had some time off to be able to do that so the transition in doing what we're doing now is it's pretty smooth and it's not really missing anything if that makes sense it's something that we've just we were able to bridge that gap and and I'm retired now and so I'm I'm actually not here all that often. Wenatchee Valley Brewing is young but offers a full slate of beers. And so we've only been brewing uh, 20 months now we just started uh, January uh, was our first beer we, we tapped um, uh, and 17. So it's exciting. It's very, very humbling, uh, but we are having a lot of fun. We started up in the business plan uh, with six beers, and so we still have those six beers. Um, they're the ones we have on the board now. So we have our, our Pole Ridge, our uh, Hefeweizen, um, our Broken Knee Session, our Overlord, uh, our Trout uh, Stout, and our Raspberry Wheat. So I guess that's seven beers. So yes, those are our core beers that we, we worked off of to start with that we've, we home brewed with, and those are the beers that people liked a lot, and that's why, we, that's why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, one of the beers that we are desperately wanting to be able to brew is a Pilsner or a Lager. Um, with the exception of all the other beers, those beers ferment three to four months, and so it takes a lot of our uh, time up in a fermenter, so we just can't afford to do that right now. Uh, that's something we want to be able to do uh, this winter. Uh, in, uh, in 1819 is to actually get uh, a lager and a pilsner going to round out our uh, our styles of beer. F 29 years of firefighting and I was firefighting prior to that uh, here in Wenatchee. It is something that is you know it's just a, a, a natural breed if you will of giving back and so one of the things that we do we have the Bushman here 
was part of the uh, the old the name of the old hotshot crew that I was on. It's called the Indiana Hotshots now. And so we have our Eniat Bushman up here. Okay. Uh, so we donate a, a dollar off each pint from the pub to Columbia Breaks. And then at the brewery, we donate a dollar each pint to the Firefighter uh, Foundation for uh, firefighters who have been injured or killed on the line. Our head brewer is uh, Peter Sardiris. Uh, and he came, uh, I've known Peter, I don't know, man, since middle school. Uh, Peter uh, uh, went to Gonzaga University, uh, acquired his engineering degree and came back and uh, took a break from uh, all that hard work he did at Gonzaga. Uh, started roofing a little bit in the winter time. He obviously wasn't roofing very much. And I said, well, why don't you come on down and help us out brewing beer? And so we haven't looked back since. And he's uh, a wonderful man, uh, very, very smart, has a passion for what we're doing. And uh, it's a great fit for us. Head brewer Peter Sedarius gives us a quick look at the process. Uh, I learned everything I know from our owner, Dan Bass, and uh, his nephew, Jesse Butcher, um, and then a lot of independent research. I'm actually looking at uh, going back to school right now. I just got into Central Washington University. They've got a great craft brew program over there. Right now we've got the only uh, open bag here. This is Crystal 40, so this is a uh, roasted malt, roasted barley here. Um, and this is going to give us a little bit of a darker color and a little bit of a caramely flavor. Uh, we're brewing our raspberry wheat here today. We like a little caramelness to kind of balance out that fruitiness and give us some sweetness. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start dumping some grains uh, and getting our mill going. Ah, so we can get this mash going. So here we're milling our grains uh, down to a fine particulate and sending them up through an auger here. Uh, so that they can drop down into the mash tun. And then as they drop into the mash tun, we stir them up, make sure we got an even consistency. For this beer, we do a 60 minute boil because uh, it's uh, just raspberry wheat. We don't want it to be super bitter. Uh, we want it to be kind of sweet on the back end. Uh, but for most of our IPAs, we do 90 minute boils. And I know there are some breweries out there that have experimented with two hour boils, two and a half hour boils, just kind of see how the hops work. Uh, we got to pass it through a heat exchanger, cool it down to room temperature, about 68 degrees if we can. We'll stick it in one of these fermenters, uh, and that's when we'll pitch the yeast, and the yeast kind of takes it from there and does the rest of our work. Uh, and after that, we actually transfer it from one of our fermenters into these smaller bright tanks. And over here, this is where we chill it and we carbonate it. And from there, we're ready to keg it up. That takes uh, about a day, sometimes two. If you visit the Pibus location, you'll find locally made tap handles with unique materials. Uh, so here at Pibus, we have a local gunsmith, Scott King, um, who's um, um, made these wood handle taps out of leftover gun stock. And so he's a world-renowned uh, gunsmith. Uh, and so uh, before we get to the, the taps, so we have our black iron pipe. It's unique. It's one of the one of the rarest ones in the country is uh, I think the rarest one in uh, west of the Mississippi is very unique there are there are um, um, uh, taps that are, are larger but not with the black pipe and so our recooler is right behind us and so we have a, a fan right here in the center that sucks air out of the cooler and circulates through there and our tap lines are right through the pipe and that's how come our beer stays so nice and cold with that and then we have Josh Barnes out of Barnes Welding uh, we like to stay local. We like to do uh, all kinds of fun things with that, uh, having local people help us out and do what we're doing. So Josh Barnes made the tap tower, made our brackets to hold the taps on. You see the hops down here and the barley back here. And then Scott King, uh, again, put the, the gun handles together for us. Whether it's hosting a little friendly cornhole competition or live music at the brewery, Dan says both locations make great spaces for communities to come together. So one of the things that's awesome about a brew pub or a brewery is the place for people to meet. We're obviously kid friendly at both locations. Um, down at the brewery, we are dog friendly as well. And as a matter of fact, I actually posted a photo on Facebook. We had two cats down there. Uh, so they brought their cats down. So I, I told Sabrina, my marketing manager, I guess we're cat friendly as well. Uh, so that was pretty funny. Uh, so anyway, they, they get to have that environment. Uh, we have live music down there. Uh, we try to stay year round as best we can. Uh, we have heaters, we have a fire pit in the, in the, in the cooler days uh, that's coming up. Humbled by his team and the quality of their beer, Dan says the brewery is all about family and fun in the valley. Humbly speaking, we brew really good beer. And it is something that uh, I just, I, on Sunday, I had a, a snow blind and I was just in awe of how well 
that beer tasted. And that's what it is, that's what we're doing. We're a family brewing craft quality beer, we're having fun doing it. That's going to do it for this episode of Spotlight on Business on the NCW Life Channel. Thanks to Doghouse Motorsports, Charter College, and Wenatchee Valley Brewing for being our guests on the Spotlight on Business. We'll see you again next week on the NCW Life Channel.